Hi, I'm Carly Blacksell and welcome to the Human Happiness video tutorial on removing your addictions, part one. Uh, before I start talking about addictions, um, the easiest way to do this is to take you back to the attachments um, video part one and the analogy that I actually used in that video. So as you may remember, um, you're laying uh, floating on the water in the middle of the ocean, you're in a starfish type position and you're floating very comfortably. You're very content, you're very happy and as I said in the video, um, it's kind of like when you're born. Um, you didn't have any worries, you didn't have any troubles, um, you were extremely content and you felt completely fulfilled, um, floating there entirely unaided on your own um, and you felt connected to every, every living being around you and like I talked about in the analogy, using the water as the means for you to be connected um, to everyone else around you. All the people, all the, the trees and the plants um, and all of the animals in the world. You could actually feel that love and connection through the water. Um, and as I said in the last video, um, that's kind of like a, the oneness um, sensation um, that you can experience. Um, and you were heading in, in the right direction, you were fulfilling your life purpose, you were floating along very happily and very contently. And as I said in the last video, um, pretty soon after your birth, um, society's fears started to kick in. Society started to teach you um, to be fearful of things um, and to um, consequently attach yourself to things. So society made it acceptable to have attachments and it actually made it completely normal to have attachments um, and it encouraged you to have attachments. So that was sort of where we were at from the last video. Um, where do addictions come into this? Well, once you have these attachments, and of course I outlined quite a few of them in that video, um, the, the four types of attachments that you can have. You can have attachments to outcomes, so like achieving something in the future. You can have attachments to people, so um, people that you, you wish to have near you and you can't imagine um, having, not having near you. Um, of course you can be attached to behaviours. Um, so, so acting in a certain way and you don't want to let go of that um, and you can also be attached to objects. So all of these things are going on. Now the next stage of once you've established an attachment to something, your higher self or rather you could say your true self or, or whatever it is that you like to call it, your conscience, um, your, your gut feeling, um, what you truly believe to be your truth, whatever, however you want to say this, it starts to send you signals um, that are saying to you that there is a lack of peace of mind around this attachment. Okay, so I'll just say that again. Your higher self, I'll just call it higher self, or your, your true self, um, starts to send you signals that say that there is a lack of peace of mind around the attachment that you have established. Um, and that will present itself um, as an emotion or one or, one or more emotions. Now, how does that actually come to the surface? Um, it can come to the surface in many different ways, and I will go into them um, in other videos. But we're talking about addictions at the moment, so I'm actually going to, to home in on one type of signal that your higher self can actually send to you, and that is um, the sensation of a craving. Okay, so and that and that, of course, a craving turns into an addiction after you feed that craving for at least 28 days. So it takes 28 days for the cravings to turn into a habit. And then once you've turned it into a habit, um, you'll continue to have cravings, but essentially it'll become sort of a part of your everyday life. And therefore you have an addiction. Okay, so you started off floating happily, you know, um, born and you're quite content in your own self, with your own self moving in your life's direction. Society starts to teach you fears. Then it teaches you that attachments are a really good idea. And then your higher self that, that knows your, your truth, your higher truth, is saying, hang on, this attachment's actually not good for you. Then it starts to send you signals. One of those types of signals is a craving. And when you feed that craving with whatever it is, be it a, a beverage or, a, or some kind of food or some kind of activity or some kind of obsession um, with something, um, then after 28 days of feeding this a craving, you, you turn it into an addiction. Okay, so that's where we're at. Then, well, the good news, <laughs> the good news is that every single craving has a specific emotion attached to it, a specific lack of peace of mind. Okay, now the reason why that's a really, really good thing to know about 
is that um, you can do the reverse. Once you know what the emotion is or what the, the event is or what the attachment is that your higher self has an issue with, you can actually reverse it. Um, every addiction can be broken, broken by addressing that specific lack of peace of mind in 28 days. So it takes 28 days to make a habit and it takes 28 days to break the habit. And with the right guidance and the right tools, you can actually achieve this in 28 days. And that's exactly what I'm going to be teaching you in the later videos. The danger with long-term addictions, it's not just the physical, emotional and mental um, uh, issues that you have around just the, the addiction itself. So, so for instance, if you're, if you're an alcoholic, for instance, that's an addiction. You're addicted to alcohol. Obviously, um, the, there's, there's mental um, issues with that. Um, it actually um, you know, lowers your brain capacity. Um, physically, of course, you're, you're damaging your kidneys, liver, etc., and emotionally, I mean, it's a depressant, so it actually makes you depressed. So those things are going on with it, but there is a, a much deeper and considerably more dangerous thing that's going on, and that is the emotions, that, the domino effect, the emotions that you actually put around that addiction. So you're addicted to something, and what happens is your ego, or whatever you want to call it, um, starts to feel guilt. It starts to feel shame, and it starts to feel out of control. Okay, like it no longer has control over your life um, and, and a, a significant lack of power. Okay, and that actually is, as I said, a domino effect and that can actually cause other issues. And any emotion that you don't address, that you hold on to, um, goes into your muscles. Um, and that once it's in your muscles, you can very easily remove it with um, Drew Yoga or any other type of yoga, in fact, um, or even just stretching if you know which muscles it's stuck in, and I know which muscles every emotion is stuck in, so I can help you with that as well. Um, if you don't address it, um, it will, after a very long period of time, it will start to move into your organs. Okay, so, and again, I know which muscle links to which organ, and which organ will be, will cause, um, will start to have um, a disease or, or some kind of illness associated with it because of that emotion. So that's the danger of holding on to an addiction, um, much larger than maybe um, what you thought it was. Um, right, so let's go back to this 28 day thing. Um, you might say, okay, oh, I've heard it's 21, I've heard it's 26, and, you know, and that's fine. If you want to go with that, that's fine. I'm going with 28 um, because 28 is a very significant number um, for us here on planet Earth. Um, if you think about it, it takes exactly 28 days for the moon to orbit around the Earth. It also, and you may not realise this, it also takes 28 days for the moon to actually spin on its own axis. Now what that means is, if you think about it, we actually never see the dark side of the moon. Now you might have realised that already or thought about that already but not realised the significance. It takes exactly 28 days for it to spin on its axis which means we're always looking at the same side of the moon. Um, at any point in time, no matter what part of the Earth we're on, we're always looking at the same face of the moon. The dark side of the moon, well, it's, obviously it's not always dark, sometimes the sun's on it, but um, we call it the dark side of the moon because we, we'd have to actually travel out to the moon to see the other side of the moon um, because it's always facing us the same way. So there's that 28 day thing. Um, another thing, um, a normal, healthy, um, young females menstrual cycle is exactly 28 days um, and of course um, plenty of people could probably debate that with me but I'm just going to go with that um, and as I said it takes 28 days for a habit to form and 28 days for a habit to be broken um, that's the really really good um, the good news about all of this the other thing um, let's let's look at the cycles of the moon just a little bit closer um, because they're going to help us with um, with this as well a new moon so the day of the new moon um, is a day to relax and meditate and rejuvenate and to start to kick your habits. Um, the first and second quarter um, is all around, and it's to do with plants as well. You can you can time when you do things with your plants and your and your crops, etc. Uh, it's a time of absorption, absorbing information. So that would be when I'm when I'm doing um, the reprogramming with you. Um, the full moon is when you're at maximum pressure, um, and then immediately after the full moon which is kind of like when a, when a lady gets her, her menstrual um, period, um, you are releasing, you're de detoxing. 
So, and to actually achieve a full release from an addiction, you need to go through those processes. You need to go through a point where you make a decision to break a habit. You need to go through a point of absorbing the new information and deciding on what it is that you would like. Um, you need to reach a, a pressure point where you make a decision on, on releasing, um, get it to a maximum point after absorbing all of this information and then release it. So um, there's a lot there with that. Um, so. I'm going to give you a quick rundown and, and, and later I will be doing, I'll be focusing on every different type of craving. There'll be a whole video on each different craving um, and each different addiction and I'll be um, teaching you exactly how to eliminate that particular craving. I suggest you probably work on one craving at a time. So spend 28 days working on one craving or one addiction um, and then spend the next 28 days. It'll go very quickly. Um, so that's what I suggest. Um, Doreen Virtue has written a f fantastic book called Constant Cravings. Highly recommend you get it if you're, if you're into reading. If you're not, you're welcome to just watch these videos and learn all about it. Um, just to give you a really quick rundown, um, if you're craving chocolate, uh, you're craving love. Okay, because chocolate actually stimulates the hormones. It, 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 um, it releases a chemical in the body um, that stimulates the hormones to actually give you the same sensation as feeling loved. And that's why people crave chocolate, because they don't have the, there's a lack of peace of mind around feeling loved. Okay, um, and so you probably have an attachment to something that's unhealthy that is trying to achieve the feeling of love, um, something or someone or some, some object or whatever to make you feel loved, and your higher self is saying, nah, this isn't working, um, we need to do this in another way, and so it sends you a signal which is a craving, and you start to eat chocolate, and then after 28 days you get addicted to it, and you can't seem to be able to stop. Um, Dairy foods, um, you're depressed. So um, the signal that it gives is, is to try to give you a pick-me-up, okay? It's an antidepressant, essentially. Um, so if you're craving it, and, and, and I mean you can't do without it. Like you, you have this, this, this need to go and get it. And if you don't have it in the house, you go and, you go and get it. Um, and, and sometimes you're at the point where you're, you're, you're eating it or, or consuming it um, without other people knowing because you just feel so ashamed about it. That's what I mean by craving. Um, salty snacks. Um, you're feeling stressed or angry or anxious, and it will depend on what kind a salty snack and how um, how crunchy it is. Um, if it's extremely crunchy, you're very stressed and you're very anxious because think about uh, the crunchiness that goes on in your mouth, so the, the violence that goes on in your mouth. Um, so you're trying to release anger. Um, and that's your higher self saying, you're angry, you need to deal with this, you need to let it out um, in a safe way. Spicy foods, you're bored, um, there's lack of excitement. Uh, liquid cravings, um, you have up and down energy cycles. Um, nuts and peanut butter, you're craving fun, again, you're bored. Um, breads, rice and pasta, they're comfort foods, okay, and calming foods. Um, and uh, one thing I thought of was if you're craving pizza, for instance, um, have a think, what is it about the pizza that you couldn't go without? Is it the crust? Okay, um, would you be happy with just a crust with just a bit of, you know, tomato -y paste on the top? Um, or is it the cheese that's on top? Or is it the meat that's on top? Or whatever else that, you, that you're putting on top? Um, and see if you can home in on whether it's the dairy product that they're using or whether it's the, the crusty bit, uh, whether it's the crunchy bit of the crust. Like, what kind of crust do you get? Do you get cheese-filled crust? Is it the cheese that you're going for? Um, which will actually tell you... Um, what kind of thing you're having a lack of peace of mind in. I, I've got no problem with, you know, um, eating in moderation. You can have a pizza, you know, every once a week or once a fortnight or whatever, whatever's the inside of your integrity, that's fine, not a problem. And all of these things, not a problem. Um, but when you're craving it and you're obsessing about it and you can't go without it, and you know that you're eating or consuming it in, in um, excess, that's when it's an addiction. That's when your higher self is trying to tell you something. Uh, cookies, cakes and pies, you're craving hugs, pleasure and reassurance. Um, candy cravings, um, and that's very Americanized. <laughs> so you're craving sweets of some description, lollies. Uh, lack of sweetness in your life, sweet pick-me-ups, rewards, entertainment. Um, and, you know, if you look up type 2 diabetes in the Louise Hay um, books, um, it's all about lack of sweetness in your life. So you actually feel like life isn't sweet. Um, there's nothing sweet going on, so you crave sweets um, to fill that, that lack of peace of mind. Uh, fatty foods, you're feeling empty. You're filling the empty space inside. Um, so... Yes, I will actually be um, isolating each of the different types of cravings, each of the different types of addictions that you may be experiencing um, and be taking you through yoga. Um, and the yoga that I'll actually take you through is um, EBR3 or the EBR4 and 5 um, combination, just like in the attachments thing because they'll all work the same way. 
um, the dancer and the locust, um, the crane and the wheel. Um, and I'll actually, what I'll do is I'll actually um, program the um, the teaching to addictions and, and attachments so that you can actually um, uh, focus on the attachment that you're working on or the addiction that you're working on and use those words um, uh, of affirmation while we're working through the actual sequence itself so it can be more powerful. Um, your affirmations, again, it's the same affirmations that um, I would suggest, um, I suggested that you use with your attachments at the beginning. So again, um, just from um, the attachments um, video part one, I love and appreciate myself exactly as I am and I approve of myself um, and doing the post-it notes again with the 12 different post-it notes all over your house and your, your work and your car, etc. So you see it all the time and you keep repeating it. Um, also, um, there's a couple of other ones that I'd like you to add to that repertoire. Um, I am willing to release the need to be unworthy. I am worthy of the very best in life and I lovingly allow myself to accept it. Um, just rewind the, the tape so you can write that down. Um, and the last one is, um, I am willing to release the need to um, have addictions. Okay. Um, and um, I, am, I am worthy of a healthy and happy life. So I might just say all those again. I love and appreciate myself exactly as I am and I approve of myself. I am willing to release the need to be unworthy. I am worthy of the very best in life and I now lovingly allow myself to accept it. And I am willing to release the need to have addictions. I am worthy of a happy and healthy life. So post-it note that all over the place and then um, let me know which um, which addiction you'd like me to work on first um, whoever votes the best um, I'll, I'll work on that first and uh, we can um, start to get you healing from your addictions um, and living a much happier and healthy life thanks for listening <laughs>